Hello YouTube, Ronan Kazi, Destiny 2. So as I'm trouncing along in Destiny 2, I'm doing some older campaign missions to kind of catch up with everything and learn about the lore. I'm not so interested in the lore, but uh, catching up and uh, doing different content that's more than just roaming, which I love roaming, but also like doing the, the game content. So, I'm going to tell you what happened today. I <laughs> woke up this morning and I try to do a lunch with lunchtime with Ronan and Kazi every day. And uh, I thought I'd talk about what I was going to talk about tonight. So, as I'm riding into work, uh, sometimes I watch what John Stewart last night, this week, or whatever the name of his show is. And they're talking about cryptocurrency, which I was going to talk about. <laughs> and I was going to talk about it while I was doing a live. And normally, I play the game and then I comment on the game after. What I didn't realize is I'm not that smart or I don't have that much capacity where I can play the game and concentrate and elucidate what my thoughts are. And I realized as I was talking about it, everyone's going to think, uh, I've been kind of negative on AI, and uh, so maybe I think people have an idea what I'm going to say about cryptocurrency. But really, when I'm talking about cryptocurrency, I'm not talking about cryptocurrency. I'm talking about bright and shiny new technology. For example... Uh, I think I've said this before, I was a VP at a company and I ran operations. Sometimes our folks would have to do PowerPoints for sales presentations and I had been in sales and I kind of was pretty particular on how we do our PowerPoint presentations. A long time ago, I noticed that people just read the slides to you. Human beings can read faster than they can say it out loud in general 90% of the time. When you're in a meeting, the last thing you want is some guy to read or woman to read what's on the screen to you. So I kind of had a rule that I try to have people stick to. And you're going to see this throughout the game. I'm not full windowed. I'm windowed. So when my mouse goes over to the left, it starts the windows thing. This happens constantly. It's, I almost die a bunch of times because of it. And so you could do five slides, title slide, thank you slide, and three slides, and there could be no words on the slides. There could be a title of the slide, that's Roxy. But you couldn't write all your stuff down. The point is, if you have a picture, people can look at the picture, but then they'll focus on your words. If you write the words down, then they're going to focus on the words you have written up there. If you have so much text and formatting, they're going to notice any time it's not perfectly lined up. It's pretty easy to line everything up on three slides. <laughs> so that's kind of the rule. And the point is, in a presentation, in a sales presentation, in a date, in a talk to your kids, in anything, the idea is to focus. The important part isn't the technology. So I'm having the person do this PowerPoint, and they say, well, I don't have the latest version of PowerPoint, so... I'm trying to download, you know, whatever the latest. And I'm like, for fuck's sake, just write the, just get the pictures and rehearse what you're going to say. It doesn't matter what version of PowerPoint. And a lot of people get stuck on the technology of things. And does some people might know what blockchain is and some people might think it's great and blah, blah, blah. But that's not the most important part of cryptocurrency. Because if it was, it's just a different technology. We shouldn't be excited about a different technology. It's not ready. We can't do it. And, you know, that's not what the value of cryptocurrency isn't the fact that they're giving you new technology. Someone's going to say that. And if that was true, then every time something's the newest or the best or the newest, latest and greatest, you would buy it. But people don't. So that's not what sales are about. And selling an idea is the same thing. So all I was going to talk about cryptocurrency is one, when you're in sales, you 
when, if you're not a salesperson, you sell the features, not the benefits. The feature of uh, Bitcoin, one of the features it uses blockchain. That's a, that's a feature, it's not the benefit. The benefit is all your transactions in theory and Bitcoin are safe and can't be hacked. There's ways to hack them. And it, can, it exists in an arena where things can be hacked outside of it, right? So whatever technology you have, you have an insecure network and you access other things through the network and you've had your network uh, hacked, infiltrated, then you know it doesn't matter how good your stuff is. It's just one thing. And this isn't, I don't want to get in a big uh, blockchain debate uh, the facts are no one has publicly hacked Bitcoin. They've hacked other cryptocurrencies <clears throat> for a variety of reasons. There's ways to hack Bitcoin. Uh, right now, the only thing stopping it from happening is it has a 256-bit encryption, but when quantum computers come up, there's potential they could break it. When you do research on quantum computers, you're going to find that the government won't tell you how much they're invested in quantum computers to crack all this stuff. And you've stopped hearing the government object to uh, Bitcoin because and they now hold a lot of shares of Bitcoin. And why is that? They didn't want you to do it before. Now it's okay. Hmm, I don't know what's the reason. Why is it suddenly okay? For one of the benefits of uh, Bitcoin is it decentralizes the currency. You can go peer to peer. You don't have to go through a bank, et cetera. In theory, people can't kind of trace what you're doing, but whatever. And all I'm trying to say about cryptocurrency, which I'm trying to say about everything, which I'm trying to say about the newest version of PowerPoint is technology for technology's sake is not an answer. The second thing I want to talk to you about in cryptocurrency is that it's not hackable. Everything is hackable. It might not be hackable in the sense that today's computers can break that hack, but people social engineer, people do all these other things. And this is like the talk about AI said to you in determinism, where determinism is nothing's random in the universe, therefore you don't have uh, free will, but then I, you can see randomness everywhere. Uh, so that is an invalid argument. And so a lot of these arguments of the impenetrability of things or the, it's just not true. You're just not looking at everything. It's not, doesn't mean it's not good. If you listen to what I said, determinism and free will probably coexist, doesn't matter. The point is, absolutes are very seldom absolutes. And uh, we can talk about absolutes at a certain point, And it's going to be really hard to have any absolutes that aren't based on faith whether you believe in science or religion, but that's talk for a different time. So you have those two functions, the hackability, technology for technology's sakes, and what makes something valuable. One of the things that makes things, how much is anything worth? I'll wait. Bueller, anyone? Bueller? Everything's worth whatever someone will pay for. Number two, traditionally, Worth is based on scarcity. Value is based on scarcity. So if something's scarce, it's usually worth more. And that's it. That's what I want to tell you about cryptocurrency. I thought it'd be cutesy that I kind of tie that in there. I don't care about cryptocurrency. There's a lot of good things about it, a lot of bad things about it. Uh, right now, it might not be mature. doesn't mean it's not going to exist. But the point isn't the technology, and that's where people get stuck on and why do people get stuck on technology? Why do technical people get stuck on technology? Because technical people don't like people. They like technology. They're not salespeople. They're technical people. If you've ever been in a technical sales environment, there's some people that can't talk to the customers, but they can talk about the product. But they can't talk to the customer and say, why do you need this piece of equipment? And I ask why a lot. There's a lot of people that don't want to be asked why, and all I want them to realize is why they don't want to be asked why. That's all. Because that's the shackles. I'm trying to help set yourself free. I don't want to set you free. You might not want to be free. I've gone a lot of parts of my life where I really push to help people, 
I wasn't helping them. Was I helping them because they, I'm doing, you know, I'm going to do it my way up? No. So I've realized all I want to do is have you ask the question, why? And you don't have to say it out loud. Why cryptocurrency? Why? Why AI? Why determinism? And I want you to ask yourself on that. Uh, why MAGA? Why Joe Biden? Why all of this stuff? And uh, there's no... Once you ask yourself why, and you understand why people see different things, it's easier to live in this world. Might not like it, might not agree with it, but if you understand why, it makes us all easier to get along. It makes your path through life a lot easier. And really, let's be honest, if you can't ask why about your children and your your significant other, that's a fatal flaw. And even more important than that, why do you do the things that you do? And once you have a good enough answer, that's okay. And those answers aren't going to always be solid. You're a living, breathing organism. I had to speed this up. I did kind of two missions in here. Uh, so I sped it up to keep the time kind of decent. So that's why I wanted to talk about cryptocurrency as kind of a catchy little way to get into this other talk. I could care less about cryptocurrency one thing or other. That's like saying I like uh, half dollars or like a sack of Juia. Side note, I was on the vending machines at work and I gave it a five and like, how's it going to give me? Is it going to give me credit? How's it going to know? It gave me a sack of Juia's. And there's something about getting coins as <laughs> dollar denominations that's great. There's something great about a $2 bill. Different talk for a different time. So why am I feeling strange? Because when I did, if you do, and I'm sorry, that live was supposed to be 20 minutes in and out. I did the division. Folks had talked about the division the other day. I wanted to kind of show them, hey, the division's still okay game. That's Roxy. There goes Caesar. There goes Macy. And I got my ass kicked in that. And it was a lot harder than uh, I thought. So I ended up doing 40 minutes. And in the middle of it, you can hear me struggling to put chains of coherent thought together because I had to use a lot of my cognitive, cognitive powers to get through that part. And so... Is that a measure that the division's hard? It's not necessarily. It's but I haven't played it a lot out of practice. And um, I notice when I've been doing lives, if you watch some of the lives, and I'm sorry, they're like two hours long. I apologize to everyone. I'll get better. But what happens is I can't talk. Right? I get so focused, I can't talk. So I will do lives. Uh, it's convenient. Because I get the commentary in all in well fell, one fell swoop. I don't really have to edit, blah, blah, blah. But it's not the best experience. So I want to thank the following people. Grenade. Super Slanky Lanky. Sloth Moots. DCZ Jimmy. Ultimate Shield. Ms. Buffalo. And a couple other fellows I, or people I haven't met before. And say thank you for putting up with my pretty shitty attempts at first. So I'm st it's still a work in progress on that part. I enjoy it in one part, but I just don't got the horsepower right now. It's it's too too many different things. And I was doing legendary Manning, and that's just a tough legendary. So what you're going to see what happens in here is the problem with not having a fully. So for me to look at the video. Uh, sometimes I need to make it full screen on one monitor. And so I have two monitors, and I'm monitoring on OBS on my laptop, which I'm going to do a review on here pretty soon. I've had it for a while. And then I play on a bigger monitor. What happens is, if I'm not full screen, uh, my cursor will go and just start lighting things up. So eventually I pull the screen off the center. It's a nightmare, YouTube, nightmare. So I apologize.
So this is just a story mission, but again, I'm trying to do the mission. And the point of this is not to see my gameplay. I've learned a lot about Destiny 2. And uh, I've learned a lot about my builds there. Look at that. <laughs> that happens at the worst times. I've learned a lot about Destiny 2, but uh, really, I would say the key, if you're coming from different games. So these are the different games I'm playing right now. Division, Division 2. Tiny Tina's, Elden Ring, Swodar, and Elder Scrolls Online. And the thing I found, look at that. This is where I almost die. Horrible. Just, I'm going to pull the screen here in a second because it starts getting intense. The thing I found in Destiny 2 is really your, what power you have. You know, whether you have Void... Solar, Arc, Strand, or Stasis. Really, they're all very powerful, but they're different kind of gameplays. And they set up differently. So that, what I found is Strand for me, because I like doing melee, is good. I don't do melee a lot because I forget. And here it's teaching me how to do Strand, or extent, Stasis. And it's okay, and I'm going to pull the screen right here. Like I'm like, oh crap, I ran out of stuff. That glaive does about 33,000. My weapons typically do like, you know, five. So that glaive is just like one shot. Look at that, horrible, horrible. <laughs> Almost dying, supercharged. Look, I pull it off the screen. Please like, subscribe, take mercy on me, comment, ring the bell. I appreciate YouTube. Thanks for everything. Thanks for all the watches. Ronan Kazi out.